It could appear that Melania Trump's timing, praising LeBron James and his children's school in Ohio, was a swipe at her husband, who questioned the NBA star's intelligence less than 24 hours earlier. The CNN interview with James, quote, made LeBron look smart, which isn't easy to do. I like Mike, the president tweeted. But according to Melania's spokeswoman, the first lady disagrees. Quote, it looks like LeBron James is working to do good things on behalf of our next generation. And just as she always has, the first lady encourages everyone to have an open dialogue about issues facing children today. The stark contrast is just the latest example of East Wing versus West Wing at the White House, as Melania Trump continues to define her own agenda. In recent weeks, the first lady has been quick to correct the record when it comes to her feelings, whether they complement her husband's or not. Amid the firestorm surrounding the president's alleged tryst with porn star Stormy Daniels, Trump's attorney Rudy Giuliani said this of Melania. She believes in her husband. She knows it's untrue. Her spokeswoman fired back, quote, I don't believe Mrs. Trump has ever discussed her thoughts on anything with Mr. Giuliani. When the New York Times reported President Trump didn't like his wife tuning into CNN aboard Air Force One, Melania's office swiftly declared she watches any channel she wants. When her husband's family separation policy caused international outrage, Melania Trump went to see detention centers near the U.S.-Mexico border for herself. How I can help to these children to reunite with their families. Whether it's taking a separate motorcade to the State of the Union, stealing the spotlight with that white hat moment, or slapping her husband's hand away in public. Everybody loves Melania. They love Melania. The president doesn't appear to mind. Right. Doing a fantastic thing. This independent streak could just be part of who this mysterious first lady actually is. I'm very strong. Uh, people, they don't really know me. People think uh, and talk about me like, oh, Melania, oh, poor Melania. Don't feel sorry for me. I, I can handle everything. Now, now, Jake, our colleague Don Lemon, when he talked to LeBron James, LeBron said he wouldn't sit down across from the president of the United States. But Melania, a spokeswoman in that tweet, said that the first lady is open to sitting down, basically, and visiting LeBron's school, as long as the dialogue remains about children and children uh, education and, and positive aspects of it. So uh, we'll see if that happens. All right, Kate Bennett, that would be quite a thing. Uh, <laughs> thanks so much. Uh, let's talk about it with our with our experts. What do you make of all this? You know, the most surprising thing to me was, A, that she responded, right? I mean, she could have just said uh, no comment. When that came over uh, the transom there and, and Kate said that this is what happened, I was just like, what is she doing? But it isn't keeping with the ways uh, she's interacted with her husband. It's almost as if sometimes they're having this public marital spat. Uh, and in this case, I mean, he, she's saying uh, that she wants to go visit LeBron James' school. I mean, that was pretty fascinating, too. She didn't have to say that, but she's essentially volunteering hearing herself for an invitation and offering herself up uh, to an invitation to the school uh, that was founded by a man who said that she that he wouldn't even sit across from her husband. Uh, so we'll see where this goes. Uh, if she ends up going there, I, I kind of doubt it. Um, but I think this is going to be an ongoing saga. We're sort of witnessing, I think, in some ways, both her independence, but her uh, tweaking and having plenty of shade for her husband. I've heard some Democrats say that they think that this is all just a ruse to get people who are Trump supporters, but maybe not crazy about the president's behavior all the time, uh, to find, latch on to a Trump that they can like and, and keep uh, those people inside the tent. Free Melania. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, uh, there, there are cynics who remember when Barbara Bush held it, went to an, and held AIDS, uh, babies with AIDS because her husband's policies you know, ignored people with AIDS, adults with AIDS, mostly gay men. I think that was um, uh, Nancy Reagan. No, no, it was Barbara Bush. Barbara Bush? Yeah. Was it yeah, was? Yeah, it was. Um, wrong. But, but um, and so there might be some of that here. Yeah. Um, but I also think that, you know, it, there, there's no sort of covering this. You know, when yeah. he does something a tad good, you know, she doesn't kind of get to claim credit for influence and then say, well, I have no influence. You don't get to go visit babies in cages in detention centers on the border and then um, act like... You don't give her uh, credit for it. Yeah, I, I, I don't give her credit for it. I think she responded because on Twitter, everybody was talking about hashtag be best. 
yeah. which is her anti-bullying Twitter campaign. And she knows that people were making fun of her for her campaign when he has been such an, uh, an online bully. And I think that's why she responded. I actually thought that was kind of a power move for her to say, well, I'll go visit your school, LeBron James, when it's pretty clear that LeBron James doesn't want anything to do with the Trumps. And we always talk about how mysterious she is, but I think she is a Trump. She seeks to protect her personal brand and reputation, especially when it comes to kid, every chance you can. So, you and know, they're I don't, very good at that. Yeah, and she, Trumps I think she's always protecting, protecting that. Their brand. And I just, I don't care to see the president and first lady fight over Twitter. And in the words of her, I just don't really care. Do you? <laughs> do you? Do you? What do you make of all this? I mean, do, do you do, have to bring me into this? Yeah. Debate? Well, I'm just wondering. You're a former Listen. Republican she's official. It is. Right. We've never seen a first lady and a president disagree publicly quite like this. I mean, there have been uh, there was the Barbara Bush thing with the, with the, with the child with AIDS, uh, and then I, I do remember also during a George W. Bush running for re-election, I think in in 2004. There was like the suggestion that maybe Laura Bush was right. uh, supportive of abortion yeah, rights, right? right? That was yeah, kind of like slipped in there right mm -hmm. before election day, and people. The theory was uh, she's doing that to let women voters right. know you can trust him. He's yeah, not going to. Maybe gonna... she was more pro gay marriage. Was the other thing? Yeah. That that came up right. Here's this. Uh, I mean, first of all, we, we've never had a president that uses such a huge platform, Twitter, to personally insult the president of the United States. Personally insult somebody, right. who, by the way, who just opened a school. For that at just, risk kids. just makes yeah. my head blow up. And guarantee would even go there. Yeah. So if she interjects a little bit of civility in this conversation, because I thought it was wrong that LeBron says he wouldn't sit down with the president either, we ought to get over all that. I'm not talking to you because I don't like what you say. We ought to try to find a bridge. And if she works to that end, good on her. I think, you know, welcome to the debate, uh, you know, Madam First Lady, and continue to do it. I think that civility might be helpful with it. I'll, I'll second that. And I also think, though, that, that the president doesn't care. Not because he's happy for her to disagree, but he doesn't think anybody else's comments are as important as his. So I think it's that, his, you know, he just makes an assumption that it doesn't really matter what she says because I'm the president and what I say matters most. But it's also notable that when he went to Ohio, uh, he had just obviously insulted LeBron James and... A, a son of Ohio. Uh, a son of Ohio. Yeah. He, he, he didn't feel comfortable enough uh, when he actually went to Ohio and was before uh, those folks who maybe they don't like LeBron James as much since he's going uh, to the Lakers. But maybe, <laughs> you know, he kind of, boy. you know, maybe he, he took what, what his wife said and, and said, you know, this is, this is not somewhere I need to go in terms of insulting LeBron James. We'll see if he insults him. And to be, to be completely Machiavellian about it, what if it was just to distract from the fact that there were so many people who found his attack, President Trump's attack on LeBron James and, and, and Don Lemon to be racist. Yeah. Well, I think he has it out for Don Lemon because there's a lot of critical coverage when it comes to the race debate. Uh, Don does a lot to have conversations about that that are really important conversations. And, you know, that interview took place on a Monday night. And so he stewed about it until late Friday night. And I, I, I think, well, it's, yeah, I think it's important to point out that Don and LeBron were talking about, in one part that I didn't know, about how LeBron James had racial slurs spray painted on his house. Yeah. How you can be in such a position of achievement and still be brought down by people, which just underscores everything that the president had to say about it. All and right. also racial, racial reconciliation, that his first experience with white people was yes. through sports. Mm -hmm. Yes. And yes. Let, let us about hope that. that she comes up with a honeydew list that includes civility. Uh -huh. <laughs> there it is. It may have worked in Ohio. <laughs>